I'll start this off with the assumption that you are more than likely aware of the crisis that plastic pollution is causing around the world. We've all seen the video of the turtle with a straw stuck up its nose, birds with bellies full of plastic, and bottles floating in our waterways. But have you heard about the plastics ending up in our drinking water? Yes, you heard me right. The most widespread form of plastic pollution is now ending up in our most essential need, our drinking water. A study shows that the highest concentration of this plastic showing up in our water is happening in the United States, with 94% of samples showing positive for microfibers in our water. These fibers have not only shown up in our homes, but also in the Congress building, the Environmental Protection Agency, and even Trump Tower in New York. So I'm sure by now you're wondering, where do these plastic fibers come from? And I bet you're going to be shocked to learn that they're a lot more common than you think. These plastic fibers are coming from everyday items like leggings, couches, and carpets. The fibers are actually derived from crude oil. Yeah. When melted down, that crude oil becomes a consistency of cold honey. And when pushed through something that you can think of as a shower head, it becomes a filament. All of those filaments intertwined together become something called polyester. These fibers are making their way into our drinking water both through our washing machines and through atmospheric pressures as well. Whenever you wash the clothing that you wear that's made of polyester, it goes through our washing machine, into our waterways, and eventually into our oceans. All of these synthetic goods shed these fibers as time goes on, including things like your couch and your carpet. It goes up into the atmosphere, ends up on the ground, ends up in the water, and is ending up in our drinking water. Dr. Brown estimates that upwards of 1,900 individual fibers can be washed off of a single synthetic material. By now I'm sure you're wondering, if this is such an issue, why didn't I know about it? And that's actually because this research is very new. The issues of microfiber only became about in 2011 when Dr. Brown was conducting a study and found that 85% of pollution on our beaches is coming from plastic microfibers. Because this research is so new, there are still questions about how this will impact human health, environmental health, as well as marine health. And although they haven't been able to nail down the effects this is having on human health, they have been able to document bioaccumulation or biomagnification. And I did learn about that in school, so I'll try to explain it to you in layman's terms. Essentially what that means is that whenever a small organism consumes something that is toxic, it can then pass up those toxins higher and higher up the food web. Meaning that whatever bacteria is consuming these microplastics, that bacteria is being consumed by a bigger fish and a bigger fish and a bigger fish all the way up the food chain. And scientists are being able to document how this is impacting those marine life's health. Difficulties that are already being documented is loss of appetite in these marine animals because of so much plastic being in their system. It stunts their growth and it has not been proven to be good for organisms that are consuming these toxins. So I don't know about you, but I don't want to wait to find out if it's going to make us sick or not. I want to do something about it now. So I have no interest in fear mongering. I just have an interest in presenting solutions to this very serious pollution crisis that we're dealing with. Obviously we can't stop drinking water. It is essential to life, but what else can we do? Well, the first thing you can do is start prioritizing natural materials over synthetic ones. Instead of choosing the materials we talked about like polyester, rayon, and nylon, choose things like bamboo, organic cotton, or hemp. These materials biodegrade and do not produce toxins like their alternative made from crude oil, like we said, polyester, which are non-biodegradable. This one is actually the one that I'm the biggest fan of, but it is washing your clothes less. I know the first time you hear this, it may sound disgusting, repulsive, I understand, but please think about how often you wash a garment just because you wore it that day. Not because it smells bad or it's actually dirty, just because it's an old habit to take off a shirt and throw it into the wash. I would highly encourage you to start rethinking that. Stop washing your everyday jacket just because you wore it a day or two. Start allowing your things to actually be worn to the point where they need to be washed. Next, we tell companies what we want. Producers cannot make products without consumers buying them. That is the entire point behind the eco-activism movement is to make your dollar count because it does. Reach out to your favorite companies and tell them that you know about the microfiber pollution issue and encourage them to make public statements against this, fund studies that have to do with figuring out the human health impacts on this, ask them to start promoting and creating more natural fibers in their line. Encourage your representatives to pass legislation to support controls on these pollutants. For instance, we can push them to tell washing machine manufacturers to put in better filters to filter out these microfibers. Your dryer does it with lint. We could push our representatives to push for legislation that makes washing machines do the same thing. We could also push our representatives to vote for legislation that has to do with putting more filters on our water treatment plants. So many of these microfibers are making it through the current filters we have, but if we could get more legislation and more funding 
to put better filters into these systems, then we would have a lot less of this pollution. And finally, there are solutions to this that have to do with innovation and creating new products that help, such as Guppy Friend. If you guys haven't heard of that before, it is a bag that you can wash your synthetic materials in, it will trap the fibers, and then you can remove them before they make their way into our waterways. Also, if you guys found value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it if you shared this information with more people in your family, because this is actually one of the biggest forms of pollution that is the least known, and I want more people to know about it. Not only do I have this video that you can share with them, but if someone in your family is more keen to reading, I also wrote a blog post on the Low Impact Movements website for it, which I will link below. But please share one of these resources with someone or even just tell them word to word, mouth to mouth, face to face, that you learned about this and do your best to educate them on the issue so more people are being activists in their daily lives by voting with their dollar. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching and remember until next time, you cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world needs all the good that you can do. Bye guys.